Welcome back to Walk, Run, Soar. This is part two for day 40, the last day of our Walk, Run, Soar series. So this is the last day, last devotion. Um, it's been so good. I've really enjoyed this devotion book. Um, and like I've said before, and I'll say it again, I encourage you to buy it because, and I'm sorry, there's my butterfly from vacation that I stuck on the front. Um, but I encourage you to buy it because there's so much that, um, I, you know, more that you could read that I, you know, didn't share in these videos. And um, the appendix stuff is awesome. Training plans and different uh, drills and things. It's a, it's a really awesome, um, really awesome devotion book. But all right, so this is number 52, last devotion, running the ultra marathon. Our verse at the beginning is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So does anyone else, when they read these verses, immediately start singing, trading my sorrows in their head? Because every time I read it, <laughs> that's the song, you know, I'm trading my sorrows for the joy of the Lord. So I always, that, that song always plays in my head whenever I read that verse. Uh, but anyway, so she starts off talking about how sometimes it can feel like a glorious sprint to the finish line. Um, certain days can feel like that, but um, that she's learned that life is much more like an ultra marathon, something that I don't think I will ever do, but you know, we'll see. I didn't think I'd do a marathon either, and that's on the books, but she says there are two types of ultra marathons, those that cover a specific distance, anywhere from 31 to 100 plus miles, and those that last for a predetermined amount of time. And she says that just as much as, you know, a physical stamina, it requires a lot of mental toughness. Um, and this is the part when I was reading and I was like, it's so appropriate that I'm doing this and tomorrow is Easter. Um, so I don't usually read word for word, I like to summarize, but the way she wrote it, I'm just going to read it word for word. So bear with me because this is a long section. But listen to these words and really think about um, what Jesus went through yesterday, today, and tomorrow. She says, then I think about how Jesus was the ultimate ultra runner. In his last week of earthly ministry, Jesus ran the ultra race of a lifetime. Jesus told his disciples to prepare for the Passover feast. During that meal, Jesus washed his disciples' feet as a radical expression of his deep love for them. He held up the bread and wine and explained that his body and blood would be offered up for each one of them. After the Passover meal, Jesus took his disciples to the Mount of Olives for his final message to them. He promised to send them the Holy Spirit to counsel, guide, and coach them. Jesus then journeyed on to Gethsemane where he agonized in prayer. The course grew challenging here. As he finished praying, his disciple Jesus came and betrayed him with a kiss. He was arrested and taken to Anas? Annas? I don't know. Where he was sentenced to death for claiming, be, claiming to be the Son of God. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, tried to convince the Jewish leaders and the people of Jesus' innocence, but a mob gathered. In a poor attempt to appease the crowd, Pilate had Jesus stripped, mocked, and severely beaten. The mob was not satisfied and called for Jesus' crucifixion. This was not even the hardest leg of Jesus' final race. Crucifixion was reserved for the worst and lowest criminals. The soldiers stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns, a great contrast to the laurel crowns awarded to Olympians, and pressed it into his head. They spit on him and struck him. Then he had to climb a great hill he had created, where his hands and feet were nailed to a cross. The cross was hoisted up in the darkness, and Jesus hung there, crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Someone offered him a sponge of sour wine, but he wouldn't drink it. He was beyond dehydration. This was worse than hitting the wall. He exhaled his last breath. This was the end, or so some thought. Um, and then she continues the story. Um, his body was brought down, brought into the tomb, covered with a heavy stone, and that, you know, Jesus separated from his father for three days. And can you imagine the loneliness that he felt? And then we all know um, what we celebrate tomorrow, the third day, an angel rolled the, st uh, rolled the stone away and revealed that the tomb was empty and Jesus was not there. Um, 
and you know the women were the first to the tomb to to discover this and then a little while later jesus appeared himself with, to the women and they fell and worshiped him um, and he sent those women to tell the others and they ran so for her and i really think for all of us that running should remind us of jesus's journey Running is hard, physically, emotionally, and mentally, but we know that doing hard things means we are following in Jesus' footsteps. Um, and that's what Paul was sharing with the, you know, the verse that I read at the beginning. And when we run this life race, we will encounter trials, but we carry in our hearts the knowledge that Jesus himself ran this arduous race to the finish. Um, and when we're weak, he's strong, and he imparts that strength to us so that we might taste that glory of the finish line. Our faith step. Do you believe Jesus ran the ultimate race when he died and rose again? Have you ever asked him to be your personal savior? Have you ever confessed your sin and brokenness to him? Take time to pray today and invite him into your heart. If you already know him in a personal way, way, personal way, write out a thank you to him for suffering, for the suffering he endured on your behalf. Our inspirational quote is from Meb Kef something? <laughs> Meb. We love Meb. Okay. Uh, he's the American marathoner who is the only person to win an Olympic medal, the Boston Marathon, and the New York City Marathon. He says, I tell people you should do one marathon in your lifetime. After that, it's optional. That's because running that 26.2 mile distance can teach you things that running a half marathon or a 10k or 5k race can't. If you can overcome those challenges to get ready for a marathon and get to that finish line, it changes your life. You are going to find something you never thought you were capable of doing. And I will add in here, just a little plug, that um, something that I plan on doing for my marathon training, and this is like an exclusive announcement, um, is I will be going through Meb's book, 26 Marathons, because um, the chapters plus, you know, intro or whatever is exactly how many training weeks the Goofy Challenge training is. So if you are interested in hearing what lessons Mev has learned from 26 marathons, be sure to join me for my Goofy training videos because we'll be going through his book. Um, okay, our training note from Coach Sean. Good form can transform your speed, reduce injuries, and increase your running enjoyment. Yes, I've talked about that before. If you, <laughs> if you don't think you have good form, you know, try changing it up and figuring out how to make it better because it really does make running easier and more enjoyable. Run tall with your hips high and a slight forward lean from your ankles rather than your waist. This will help you breathe easier and give your legs greater, greater range of motion. Keep your shoulders relaxed while pumping your arms forward and backward with your elbows bent at 90 degrees. The faster you pump your arms, the faster your feet will move. So yes, running form is, can make a big difference. So I, I, you know, I hadn't looked at this last one um, until just a few minutes ago when I sat down and read it and got ready for, to do this, um, but it's so massively appropriate that I'm ending this, um, doing it in 40 days and ending it on Easter with that last devotion, talking about what we're celebrating. Um, so if anything, if anything I ever wanna share with these videos that I do is how precious and special anyone that's watching these um, how precious and special you are to God and that that is what he did because he loves you and wants to spend eternity with you is he hung on that cross and, and died so, you know, we didn't have to and we could live forever with him. So please, please, please understand that, that you are so precious. So I hope everyone is having a great Saturday and has an excellent, happy Easter um, and celebrates that he is risen. He is risen indeed. It's such a, it's my favorite holiday. It used to be Christmas, but then once I got a full, real, real understanding of what Easter really, really means, um, Easter easily became my favorite. So um, yeah, I can't believe this is the last one and we're done. Uh, so like I said, the next thing coming down the line, um, series wise will be Goofy Challenge training that'll be at the end of June. So between now and then, we'll just be having fun until training starts. So um, yeah, love you all. Thank you for joining me for Walk, Run, Soar. And like I just said, and I'll say it again in different words, always remember that you are God's masterpiece. I'll see you next time.